In the first part of chapter 1, your book talked about all the ways that tests influence the major events in our life, in our careers, in our education paths, etc., and identified some of these tests. In this section, we're going to discuss very quickly how tests evolved to where they are today. The history of psychological testing is a fascinating story, and it has abundant relevance to present-day practices. Our tests today didn't just spring from a vacuum. They evolved slowly. And you may be surprised at how long we've actually been using this test. As early as 2200 BC or BCE, um, China had systematic tests that were used to select and promote for government jobs. Individuals passing the test were entitled to a number of privileges, which varied depending on the current dynasty. The ancient Egyptians and Greco-Roman cultures also had ideas relating to mental health and personality, but they really didn't have any formal means of psychological assessment. Psychological testing in its modern form originated a little more than a hundred years ago in laboratory studies of sensory discrimination, motor skills, and reaction time. And this was done by a British genius, Francis Galton, who lived from 1822 to 1911. And he invented the first battery of tests. And it was a rather peculiar assortment of sensory and motor measures. Um, he was Dar Charles Darwin's cousin. And it's believed that his interest in this stemmed from... Um, Charles Darwin's publication of The Origin of Species. Galton was an interesting character, started out as a, a student of mathematics, and then when he suffered a breakdown at university, he left university to s explore Africa and the Middle East. Um, but he was a statistician, and so even though he left the university, he recorded statistics about all of these different places that he visited. In 1865, he began to study heredity, and um, he hypothesized that human mental abilities and personality traits were inherited. And you know that's what his cousin, Charles Darwin, had said about animals. And these hereditary findings sparked the eugenics movement, which I'm sure you've all heard of. And that called for methods of improving the biological makeup of the human species, through some selective breeding practices. And Galton even went so far as to advocate human breeding restrictions to curtail the breeding of the feeble-minded. Of course, you have to have some statistical way to measure these uh, human traits, and our statistician had the answer to that, too. He had a value-laden categorization or... Um, ranking of populations based on measurable traits and natural ability. And he was the first to demonstrate that the Laplace-Gauss distribution or the normal distribution could be applied to human psychological attributes, including intelligence. He was also the one to use the term percentile scores for measuring relative standing on various measurements in relation to normal distribution. At his mental testing center, yes, he did have a mental testing center, and I might mention that it was the first one in the world, a person could take a battery of tests and receive a written report of the results. Um, so you can see that his research still continues to influence psychological testing today. We still talk about normal distribution. We still use percentiles. And he also um, was the first one to suggest that um, whole populations might have a higher intelligence than another. I don't think I need to introduce this guy. You probably all know him as the father of experimental psychology or the father of modern psychology. He's been called both. His contribution to psychological testing was the de development of what would end up being the foundation of Binet's scale of intelligence. Binet had developed a scale where specific tasks were directly correlated to different levels of ability or a mental age. But Binet was not suggesting that each task would correspond exactly and reliable to a particular mental level. 
So as the scale developed, Binet found it necessary to use a number of tasks at each level to determine mental age, and it ended up being very reminiscent of one of the psychophysical methods developed by Wundt to determine the level of a person's sensitivity to faint stimuli or to small physical differences. James Cattell was an American who lived from 1860 to 1944 and he studied with both of the other two guys and he was a student of theirs and he's an important figure in the study of testing for several reasons. In 1890 he proclaimed the modern testing agenda in his classic paper entitled Mental Test and Measurements and he was responsible for mental testing in its modern form. His work with mental tests and reaction times were a good start. They really were. He administered his mental tests to freshman college students at a couple of the different universities where he worked over a significant period of time. Uh, but during his time at Columbia, he did administer them for a while, but then they were proven unreliable and uh, were replaced by Binet's test eventually. He's quoted, he was supposedly quite a modest man, and he's quoted as saying that perhaps tests would be useful in training or in mode of life or indication of disease. I think that we can all agree that testing has undoubtedly snowballed beyond anything that this guy could have imagined. Psychological testing is huge in our society. As just one small example, why don't you consider the number of standardized achievement and ability tests that are administered in the school systems of the United States. Then think about the number of articles that you've read lately, or the many times that you've heard on the media, TV, or radio um, about educational testing and the effects of uh, students not doing well on the different educational tests. Uh, all about the repercussions that is that it has for teachers and students and really even the school district if the students don't do well on that state testing the school district can end up um, being forced to undergo reform so I do think that testing has come a really long way because that's just one small area of test um, that's not even looking at personality tests or any of the other kinds of tests I do think it's interesting though, by the way, that in his later life, he, um, his organization, the Psychological Corporation, and if you're not familiar with that, you will be before you graduate, uh, they published the Weschler Intelligence Test, and in case you missed when you were reading on page 16, the Weschler is probably the most commonly administered intelligence test and we're going to revisit it at some length on um, chapter 10.